Okay, then the other organ you need to know is the LAM. Now, the LAM is part of your digestive system. So whenever you take food in, you eat, food goes down your esophagus, goes into your stomach. Okay, then first bend of your small intestine is the duodenum, and then it goes into the LAM. Okay. So we've got digestion happening in your mouth, in your stomach, in the duodenum. By the time it gets to the ileum, so this blue bit here is the ileum, all of the food has been digested and we've got things like amino acids and glucose, fructose, galactose, lots of monosaccharides, fatty acids, glycerol, vitamins, Minerals like magnesium, calcium, and so on. And so all of those nutrients need to be absorbed into the blood. If they're not absorbed, what would happen to them is they would enter the colon, the large intestine. So we've got the colon and then end up in the rectum and then passing out through the anus. So we're saying the ileum... It's part of the small intestine and its job is to absorb amino acids, monosaccharides, fatty acids, glycerol, minerals, vitamins and water. So it needs a large surface area to do that. Can you remember the name of the little things that stick out? They look like fingers sticking out. You would have learned the structure of this in year 11. The wall of the ileum isn't smooth. It has lots of these things that stick out. So if you were to take a cross section, instead of just having a, a tube like that and all the nutrients passing down there, instead of that, the wall has got all these finger-like projections. What are they called? Villi. So one of those is called a villus. Now, whenever, whenever you take in We need food, to know the structure. Okay, so we're saying, for the people that weren't here, when you take in food through your mouth, you start to digest it in your mouth, you swallow it, it goes down through your esophagus. Okay, so it goes down through your esophagus. For some reason this isn't playing ball. Okay, so take the food in your mouth, it goes down through your esophagus, into your stomach, more digestion. Into your duodenum, more digestion. By the time it gets to the bit I've coloured in blue, that's your ileum, digestion's finished. And you're left with a mixture of digestive enzymes, water, glucose, amino acids, fructose, simple sugars, fatty acids, glycerol, minerals, vitamins, and so on. And so the ileum that I've coloured in blue, your small, that's part of your small intestine, its job is to absorb the glucose and the oxygen and so on by, os by diffusion, okay, and then by active uptake. So if we look at the cell's lining, the, or if we, if we just look at the, 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 if this is just like part of the tube, that's the ileum, it's not a flat-sided tube. The, you've got these villi, okay, millions of villi which increase the surface area. And if we look we look at this diagram here the we talked about your gut being a tube okay so it's a tube and on the inside we've got lots of different sort of finger like projections but the outer layer of this tube is called the serosa and it's really just a tough outer layer it's, it's the it's the outer lining And it will support and it'll protect the LM from friction inside your, your body against, you know, in, ca in case it rubs against other organs and so on. The next layer inside is a layer of muscle called the muscularis externa. Now, have you heard of peristalsis? No. no. 
when you swallow your food, when you swallow your food, it, 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 your mouth makes it into a kind of pellet called a bolus. And you swallow that and it gets taken down through your esophagus into your stomach and then it's squeezed through the duodenum and the ileum and so on. There are two types of muscle in this layer. The muscularis externa has got muscles that are circular, so they're that shape there. When they contract, they squeeze in. All right, and when they relax, they open out. So it's a bit like if you've got a big tube and you're squeezing in and pushing the food down. But there's also muscles that run up and down um, the, the digestive system called longitudinal muscles. So circular, obviously in circles, longitudinal go lengthwise. And it's the action of these two types of muscles. They work together to squeeze the food down through your gut. So if you were standing on your head, digestion would still happen. It's not just gravity that pulls it down. It's the action of these, this pair of muscles, these two types of muscles working together. And that's called peristalsis, all right? And that moves the food through your gut. So the muscularis externa has got two types, circular muscle and longitudinal muscle. And actually on the next page, that later on. The next layer then is called the submucosa. All right, and then there's another layer of muscle and it's called the muscularis mucosa. So I'll draw it in blue here. I'll just shade it in blue. The next layer inside that is called the mucosa. So we've got five layers of tissue. And in the very center, that is the gap. That's the hole that the food is traveling down through. And you've come across the term lumen before when you studied arteries and veins and capillaries talked about the lumen of the blood vessel well this is the lumen of the gut here it's just basically the gap the hole in the middle so this bit here is the gut lumen and that's where the liquid containing the glucose the galactose the amino acids the minerals and the vitamins and so on that's where the food is in the lumen of the gut So the mucosa is the layer which is closest to the food. Around it, uh, we've got a thin layer of muscle called the muscularis mucosa. So it's the muscle that moves the mucosa. The muco mucosa will have millions of, of villi. And so it'll move these villi so they're sort of waving around. Underneath it, we've got a layer called the submucosa. And that will have blood and lymph vessels. So there'll be arteries and, um, well, well, really capillaries there to take the, the food away. Um, and they will join up together to make the hepatic portal vein, which will contain all of the nutrients then. Underneath the submucosa, we've got the layer, two layers of muscle, the circular muscle and longitudinal muscle, which pushes the food through the gut. And then we've got the outer layer, which protects it, called the serosa. All right. So you need to learn those labels. 
If we look at the diagram underneath then, we, we talked about the fact that there are millions of these villi. So this is a, a diagram of a villus here. Now at GCSE, you would have learned that it's this sort of shape here, that there's blood vessels inside there. So we've got our, like arterioles and venules. Um, and then that we've also got lymph vessel in the middle here. So it's just a little bit more detail here. So this is the villus. The cells lining the villus, there's only one layer of cells around the villus. And those cells are what are called columnar epithelial cells. So columnar epithelium. What's a column? Well, a column looks like that. These cells are sort of that shape there. Now, they they're look a wee bit flatter on that diagram, but they are actually that shape there. And every so often, there will be some goblet cells. So a goblet cell looks like this. A goblet is an old-fashioned name for a, a drinking utensil that we'd have used in medieval times. Um, sort of had a big hole in it, drank wine and mead and stuff out of it. They're called goblet cells. They make mucus and the mucus then is secreted out to protect the layer there of the, the villus. So they make mucus. Inside, we've got blood capillaries. We've got a lacteal as well, which takes the, the, the fats away the amino acids, the sugars, and so on, they will move into the blood capillaries. But then we've got these structures here called crypts of Lieberkin. Let me just, so down here, there's a crypt is an old fashioned term for, you find crypts underneath cathedrals, down underneath, and they're sort of um, rooms underneath. So we've got a crypt, it's down underneath the surface crypt of Lieberkuhn. At the base of that, we've got panath cells and they will secrete chemicals which will kill bacteria. Okay, down at the, the crypt of Lieberkuhn, basically it's a gland, it will secrete mucus and then down here there will be cells that are constantly dividing to make new cells. They push the old cells up um, and the panath cells at the bottom there will also make a kind of antimicrobial chemical which kills bacteria and so on. All right. So underneath that then, so that is all the mucosa. And if you look at the, the label here, so the mucosa, we're talking about this, this section here. So that's all the mucosa there. Underneath the mucosa, we've got the muscularis mucosa. So yeah, you can see that there. So this next level here then is of, whoops. So we enable this, need to label this as mucosa. So just a very small layer of muscle which will make the villi sort of wave about a bit, move about a little bit to get in contact with all um, the food that's in the, the, the gut. So we've labelled the mucosa, that's where the villi are. We've got the muscularis mucosa. The next level then, the next layer is the submucosa. So if we go down here, then this next, I'm a wee bit messy here, but this next bit here then is the sub mucosa. And as I said, we've got blood vessels and we've got lacteals in there, which lacteals are part of the lymphatic system. So the lacteal, they feed into the lymphatic system. What's next then after the submucosa? Kitty, what's next? Um, yeah. So
And when we were talking about this, we said there's two layers of muscles. So there's muscles that are circular muscles, and then there's muscles going up and down, longitudinal muscles. If you cut through there, circular muscles you'll see, you know, as lines. If you cut through something that's going up and down, if you cut through that, you'll just see wee dots or wee circles. And so we've got these little circles. So this would be the longitudinal muscle. And finally then, the outer layer is the serosa. So look, for Tuesday, I would like you to draw the diagram of the leaf, that question. You've got the photograph, you've got the tissue, the block diagram. Lines are clear lines, they're not sketches. So when you're drawing a line, it's a clear line like that. It's not a kind of sketchy line. Diagram of the leaf, and I want you to complete page of notes on the LAM. And then Wednesday is the essay about cell division. All right, any questions? So just a quick recap. We're saying the ileum is your small intestine. Uh, the tube, that structure of a villus, okay? So we see that it's only, the wall of it is only one cell thick. And that wall is this layer of cells here that I'm coloring in green. And those cells are columnar epithelium cells. Columnar in that they are like this shape here, like columns. Okay? Every so often there'll be a cell that looks like this. And that's a goblet cell, and it secretes mucus. Mucus is there to help lubricate, to help the, the food particles slide over, uh, uh, and to keep everything nice and moist and moving. We talked about the Crypt of Lieberkuhn. So, so there's little dips down there. Crypt of Lieberkuhn here. And at the base, we've got panath cells, and we talked about those cells and how they produce antimicrobial chemicals, chemicals that will kill um, any bacteria that manage to have got this far. Um, the crypts of Lieberkuhn, basically, they, they are glands, and that's where cell division takes place. They're making new cells there. They're pushing um, the, other cell, the dead cells out of the way. Okay, so that is all part of what we call the, the mucosa. This diagram here is, is a cross-section, a transverse section through the gut. And it could be through the ileum, it could be through the duodenum, it could be anywhere. But it's the same layers. So the bit there in the very centre is the lumen of the gut. That's the hole. That's the cavity. That's where the food and now the digested food passes through. It's surrounded by the, the layer that I've sort of dotted red, which is called the mucosa. So we have been looking at this bit here. And if we look, this whole bit here is called the mucosa. So everything we've been talking about is part of the mucosa. And it's the part that is in contact with the digested food particles. Okay. Underneath that, then, we have got this layer that I've shaded in, uh, in blue, which is a layer of muscle. And it's just a very thin layer of muscle. And that's responsible for, for contracting and relaxing to make those villi sort of wave about a bit. So they come in contact with um, the, the, the glucose molecules that are in the lumen. So say we've got a thin layer of muscle, which is the muscularis mucosa. Underneath it, the layer is the submucosa. And that's where we've got blood vessels and the lymph vessels. So, yep, submucosa is next. After that, we've got another layer of muscles. In fact, we've got two layers of muscles here. We've got muscles that go around, circular muscles. And then we've got muscles that go up and down the length of the duodenum and the ileum, and they're called longitudinal muscles. So together, that layer is the muscularis externa. And then finally, there's a tough outer layer called the serosa, and it's a layer of connective tissue. So there'll be fibers like collagen fibers there, 
um, and that will support and protect the ileum from friction and against other organs in the abdomen. Okay, so you have got... Okay, that one there. So, what is the layer that is right up against the, 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 where the food and the liquid is? Lloyd, what is it? Mucosa. Mucosa. So if you look at this to that diagram there. So you need to learn that so that if you get a photograph, then you, you can work out just, you, you just work out the position of things. It's not the, really what they look like. It's where the structures are. That's how you name them, all right? Right, see you tomorrow. There's lots of notes there, which your page of notes that you need to fill in. Sorry, I thought I'd ask you to do that for today and then I realised you didn't have that. So you need to do that tonight. That kind of going back, go to your textbook. You need to read through the notes there about absorption. The circle photograph. And we will pick this up in a moment after we've popped our beetroot in. All right, okay. Okay, so if we have a look at this question, um, it says it's a photograph of a transverse section of the ileum. What I, what I want you to do now is look at your diagram of the ileum, the one that you've labelled, as in the, the diagram that I gave you, the circles that we looked at then. Okay, this is showing you, I mean, these are villi here, these structures here are the villi. We've got layers here. So the bit that's right up against where the food solutions would be, that's where all the food stuff would be. So that layer B is the mucosa. So you can label that as mucosa. Now, what about the other things? What are structures A? Structures A are part of the mucosa. What do you think they are? Jessica, what do you think structures A are? Let me see. Well, we're just going to label them as villi, okay? It's not that awfully clear. So we'll just label it A as villi. We've labeled B as the mucosa. So what is the layer just directly underneath the mucosa? Caris, what's it called? Yep. So we've got the muscularis mucosa. So C is muscularis mucosa. And then D, so we've said that layer there is a the muscularis mucosa. D is just underneath it. So Molly, what's it called? Have, we'll have a look back at your, your diagram. The diagram of the ileum. Anybody help her out? Cameron, you've got it in front of you. What do you think it is? Yeah. What comes underneath the submucosa? Good. Muscularis externa. And the very bottom layer then, what's it? Cirrhosa. So look, you labelled that. You couldn't have labelled that without actually 